Hey, Gabriel Blake. Hey, Gabriel Jose. Where are we today? I'm in freezing San Francisco on my couch. I still haven't moved to the other the other armchair. One day. <laughs> One of you remember the bodies. Yeah, and it's still warm here. Uh, I was talking with someone that lives in San Jose today, and she was telling me, it's like, she was like dressed up, you know, like with a hoodie, even a scarf. I was like, can't ask, like, should Surprisingly cold, and she was telling me sadly that that it was like super, I don't know, like 10 Celsius, then maybe like just 40 something, 50 degrees in the morning. And I was like, Yeah, yeah. It's, it's in a 40. Wake up, it's insane. Yeah, and I was like, Yeah, it's a bit over 70 right now here. It almost feels like the temperature is half inverted, you know, like right now. We're having like a pretty mild <laughs> fall that it makes me terrified. Maybe you guys are going to be getting a snow this year. Oh, a white Christmas. A white Christmas, exactly. Uh, but what did we watch today? This was your pick, and you chose, because you loved The Square, to watch the latest film by, I can never remember his name, Ruben Ostlin, and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly, because he is Swedish. Um, and you said it won the Palme d'Or? this year again so, the triangle of sadness he also won for the square which yeah, was a did. film that was infuri- infuriatingly confusing for me why confusing uh, just the oh why confusing? my emotions were confusing there were some moments i thought were brilliant some that i felt were so uncomfortable i could barely stand it without like giving too much this guy is a professional of just taking things too far Yes, exactly. And he likes to fester on a scene, something you feel uncomfortable. You know, there is an oh. a scene towards the beginning. There is a scene at the beginning that I was like just sinking on my seat about like, dude, dude, just move Did it on. Part two on the boat? No, act one, act one, like the dinner scene. And I was saying, like, dude, just oh. move it on. You know, and then with the elevator, it's like, just, okay, just, just, the point is made. Uh, but he likes that. He goes for that. He. But again, case I know I don't want to give like anything too much away. Thank you got to summarize it. The reason why I wanted to watch this one is because I really like the square, and I was always under the impression that you didn't. I rewatched it like two, three months ago, and I was still like laughing aloud. That was a movie about a bit more like the art world, you know, like a bit more like uh, museums and how do they approach art and how society, you know, like relates to it. And it was a bit more of a collection of sketches, more than anything else. There is like a, a story, you know, like following this. But I tend not to like comedy too much. And I felt like this was so cynical and about a topic that I feel like pretty along the same lines about like where is the the threshold is like where this is no longer art and it's a stupidity, you know, that I felt like that was like a very interesting reflection. Uh, so I was like super excited when I saw like the trailer for this movie about like, I need to watch this and I need to make you watch this. And you did, congratulations, you succeeded. Thanks. So what is this movie about, Blake? So like, like the square, this is somewhat episodic. It's like these loosely connected vignettes. Um, it takes place in three or four parts. Um, so part one, we see a British male model going on a casting call in some European city. Is it Berlin? Or am I confusing Tar? I, it's a nameless European city where fashion is important. He goes on a high, high-end fashion modeling call. We see the absurdity of modeling very briefly not not very briefly we see the absurdity of modeling um, <laughs> there is nothing to brief in this movie <laughs> yeah no he like you said he wants you to fester in whatever shit he took yeah so um we see the modeling call and then we see that he has dinner with his model girlfriend this mm-hmm. girl just dropped dead gorgeous mm-hmm. um literally drop death I think that I told you that unfortunately, like this actress. Oh, that's who died. Yeah, that girl, the young girl. Wow. So, I mean, you told me this, but apparently that actress died during. Like the, the promotion, yeah, yeah, yeah. When they were doing like all of the, yeah, all of the circuit. Jesus. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. 
She's young too. She's like 23, 24. Good lord. Yeah. Um, okay, so they have an awkward conversation about money and a, a, it's, it's expecting the man to pay it about traditional gender roles, which he doesn't want, but she clearly does. Um, well, no, she doesn't clearly want. I mean, she plays like really coy. Like during the conversation, there is like a lot of back and forth. We see that the guy is uncomfortable. It makes you feel like even more uncomfortable how the back and forth like keeps going on. And they're both like, a, you know, like hitting around the booze about like, well, you know, I was expecting you to pay. It's like, well, I can pay now. It's like, no, 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 that's not the point. The point is you didn't offer to pay, you know? So it's it lasts like 10 minutes, like that conversation to the point of, uh, I want to slap both of them. And the, the, you mentioned the elevator scene. They continue the conversation as they get in the elevator to go up um, to their hotel room. And as they're exiting the elevator, the doors keep opening and shutting, except he stops it from shutting. And it's just this extra layer of making you uncomfortable because they don't leave the elevator, but he keeps opening the door over and over. Anyway, so well, we meet he these two. Yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't say anything of like intellectual value, but he does seem to be deeper than she does at the very least. He seems to be a good person, interested in more than, this is just my opinion. I don't think the filmmakers intended anything, but I got the impression he was a solid guy with his head on his head square on his shoulders. Um, they fight over this, she leaves. She comes back and said, yeah, I was being manipulative, but I want to be honest with you. This is a fairly transactional relationship. We both like each other, but, you know, taking pictures of each yeah. other grows our following. Yeah. And he's like, no, I'm in love with you and I'm going to make you love me. Yeah, yeah. Basically, they're doing it for the followers. And I have to say, I feel like both characters are completely vapid. I was telling this to my boyfriend about, uh, hey, I think that this director loves to make main characters that they are basically a wet fart. That is that they are impossible to love. But why do you think he's vapid? Admittedly, he doesn't have like intellectual conversations, but he's not the one posing for these fake selfies nonstop. He just kind of follows her around and takes pictures of her posing and pretending. To oh no 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 no! No, she also takes pictures of him, but only a couple of them. Because she's more vapid. Well, because she's an influencer, she actually makes like a lot of money from that. Is that she gets given like a lot of stuff, and this is how it connects to the second act. Okay, so on to part two, they're on a small luxury, well, it's a small cruise ship, an enormous private yacht to go on, a $250 million yacht to go on a ultra luxe cruise with a bunch of other very old, out of touch, rich white people. Um, they are served by a staff of blonde white people who are wanting to please the staff by any means to get a huge tip and then there's also another group that runs the ship cleans the ship that's on a lower level that's all brown all brown yep. and black yep um so as it's not really needed to be said but he likes to hit us over the head with his metaphors and analogies there's no subtleties here or no um so there's a scene where there's a drunk old white russian who she has a great idea. She wants all the staff to swim while she, well, she pretends to be the staff and she insists and insists on, and insists. So they call down to the kitchen and the kitchen's like, look, we can go for a swim, all of us, but all of this fresh seafood is gonna go bad. And they said, well, she's insisting. So they go, <laughs> they still serve the seafood to all the people and everyone starts to vomit and shit endlessly and this is the scene i thought you were talking about that would not end and all of this happens during a storm so there's like shit just flowing through the halls there's this poor woman i think it's actually the russian woman that insisted on the swim who's like vomiting and shitting on her toilet but the boat's rocking so hard and the floor's covered with liquid <laughs> so sliding back and forth um basically I read an interview, sorry, I read an interview and uh, they were actually talking about that scene. And he was saying that his style is that, it's about like taking things too far, you know, like making, if this was like a 30 seconds kind of thing, you'd be like, oh, that was disgusting. But this, you may laugh the first couple of times that someone vomits, but he said, this is, everyone vomits, everyone is lighting, you know, in a way that is like pretty graphical about like, probably that person broke something, you know, to getting to a point that is that you move from, 
being hilarious, being uncomfortable, and then at the end feeling pity for them about like this is torture what they are like going through. I only felt sorry for myself. I... <laughs> <laughs> but what he was saying is that hey, my initial cut of this, I think that it was four hours. I cut a lot of stuff. And it's like this is scene where we have like the final uh cut is that I was so used to edit it down, you know, that when we had the first focus group for actually showing it to random people, I I wondered to myself like, holy shit, I think that this may be too much. No. 20 minutes. That is, is the longest one. I think that is like 20 minutes probably of the movie. So leading up to the scene, there are plenty of conversations on the boat, including the drunk Russian who insists the entire staff swim. Um, there's one of the funniest conversations, in my opinion, where an old lady says, hey, I noticed the sails were dirty. And Woody Harrelson, who has a weirdly short role in this film, is like, hey, we don't have any sails. He's the captain of the boat. We don't have any sails. This is a motorized yacht. And she's like, no, let me ask my husband, Magnus. Yeah, Magnus says there are sails. Could you clean them? And he's like, well, I guess we'll clean them. And then there's this long drawn out protracted scene where Woody Harrelson is a socialist American and he meets a capitalist Russian who made his billions selling, um, as he shit. likes to put it, he sells shit, which is fertilizer and they get incredibly drunk and basically cause a panic on the ship announcing the ship is going down when it's not but then some pirates come and blow up the ship during the storm um and then we enter part three i think it's part i might get the part numbers yeah, wrong, yeah, yeah it's part three it's act three yeah and five or six of the characters end up on this is still this is still on the cinema so Okay. I don't know. I don't know how much. Maybe we can actually like just withdraw from the ending, like not so talking let about me, it. Let me just say, we enter part three. <clears throat> the survivors end up on an island, and the power structures flip because the rich people don't have skills, while the poor brown people have the skills needed to survive in rougher conditions. And the rest of the film plays out, basically exploring this power dynamic that flipped on its head so maybe i spoiled too much but we won't spoil the last what two hours yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no no because this movie is two hours and 20 the vomiting scene was 20 minutes at least so you have to leave some time for everything else what it's only 220 for some reason i was thinking it was 240. no 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 it was 220. uh yeah but basically the third the third act still keeps playing with the idea of using beauty as a, as a how to say, like a bargaining chip, you know? Yes. Because we see like beauty the bad and skills and, and how useless money is in certain situations. Correct. You know, and it's a bit more about like how they replace that is they see some influencer and she gets like all of the stuff for free. And is that because of her beauty? So is that basically trading her beauty for all of these kind of random gifts? And we see like a similar kind of dynamic also in the third act, you know, about like how beauty is traded for just survival is. Um, I mean, maybe at its basis, this is about currency and the context of currency and what can be currency in what situation and how you yeah. spend it or, or consume it. Yeah, yeah, because basically when the uh, the Russian woman asks all of the staff to just jump from the uh, toboggan, is toboggan is called cool? the slide? Mm -hmm. It's like at that yes. point, it's, the word slide is like they actually say, like, hey, look, this goes like against most regulations. We cannot do this. It's like, it makes no sense. It's because that is like all of the staff is that this is a big problem. And it's like, no. Nope. But she's rich, we have to do whatever they want because they are rich and we want that money. That's like the chip that you use in that, that, in that place. So uh, I, the point comes across like pretty, you know, like clean from that perspective. Let me just ask you about something without giving away, did you like the ending? I will say that in his style of where he takes everything way too far, it works perfectly in this film. <laughs> Do you like his style? I will say that his style worked for me in this film. As I recall, it was too much for me in the square. Mm -hmm. I, I still get upset thinking about that um, 
that overpriced dinner where the guy comes and acts like a gorilla i was like you know you can't make me this uncomfortable and expect me to like this would you say would you say that uh robin osland is of the same school as lars von trier uh, so obviously that was in my head from the beginning of this recording because and i immediately went to how ridiculous the execution of pr was <laughs> <laughs> i i i honestly feel like i was feeling so peace on the dinner a scene you know because in triangle of sadness in triangle of sadness you okay. know about like just toot toot just move it on but i just feel it's like he just wants to manipulate the audience he just wants us to actually just feel yeah, in a specific way he wants way. us to feel uncomfortable and he wants us to understand the absurdity of society and he highlights the absurdity and exa exaggerates it to to no end yeah. which is it's fine yeah yeah i, I don't think that there is anything it's not really my flavor of film but honestly i felt upset peace and entertained at the same time while watching this movie I will say I was very entertained. This did not feel like two hours and 20 minutes at all. It went by very quickly. There's things to laugh at. There's drama, tension. There are issues, I think. He could have edited it down a little bit more. But overall, it, it's a... The way I described it to my husband, it, this may not have been my favorite film, but it was by far more interesting than the other options in the theater. And I would prefer... Uh, uh, interesting film with f issues or flaws compared to i don't know anything that's just kind of middle of the road yeah i uh, I, i don't know what a movie we was like not too long ago that you also told me that is i went to watch and i was i was not too convinced but you were telling me is i this is like one of the most interesting things that you will be watching on the cinema right now it's like at least different it's like fucking different and from this perspective i agree this was like a movie that for me is a like, this is not perfect is that those 20 minutes of vomiting they will have been like just the same effect with 10 of those <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because i'm thinking about our conversation about tar and how you preferred more subtlety and nuance i feel and i get that his style is to be over the top but he could have could have benefited for more subtlety and nuance and not made such a big deal of the brown people are on the lowest level of the deck and then the white people are sucking the teeth of the billionaires and then the billionaires are on the top and then that whole thing gets flipped on the island and yeah like we get it it yeah. could have been you know you could have made us think more than hit us over the head about it yeah no he's he has a style that is like pretty correct because in the square is the same He's like all of the but jokes are another director that has this style, so this kind of makes him unique. I mean, yeah, no, the I'm sure, but he infuses this melancholy beauty to everything he does, so it's kind of separate than this absurd black comedy. Yeah, I have to say that there was the the ending of the vomiting scene when everyone is like just like panicking because the ship is going down and everyone is like with the life vest and they are like just waiting without lights on the yards and they are like just waiting on the aisles and they are like just passing by a thing that is like the captain of the staff the staff manager and she's like just passing by with the flashlight and you see them like just terrify like cover in human material you know and it's like they almost feel they actually made me think about like the uh all of these videos that we used to see in spain about like immigrants that they come on these boats that they are like risking their lives like 200 of them in a tiny small boat about like they're like risking their life in a very subhuman kind of situation and it was a bit like the first time that you see this kind of inversion about like hey they are presented as these extremely luxurious people you know and they are like bringing down to earth just by bad seafood did you end up seeing the decision to leave no no i didn't um it takes place in korea but there's a chinese immigrant woman and she talks about how she came to the country illegally in a fish container and so by the end of nine days she was covered in fish and human shit and it made me think that specific scene i was like oh 
this is basically how she traveled, just not on a $250 million mega yacht. Yeah. It's just the same. <laughs> yeah, and they were on those, in that circumstance, like probably for 30 minutes or one hour, you know? And that woman was for nine days. So, but in any case, it was like a bit more like trying to portray like the frailty of humanity, you know, about like at the end of the day is that we, you know, humans and the third act is for just portraying that even more about like how you adapt to this modus operandi for way longer, about like you don't have like the mechanism of what it was making you, you, how you adapt to this reality now. Yeah. So, did you like it? I, di I did, yeah. I did like it. I, I was entertained by it. Like I said, I found it interesting. Um, I have a hard time remembering the specifics of my opinion on The Square, but as I recall, I liked it more than The Square. Um, I thought the performances were good. And the script was compelling, even if it was so, like, hit you over the head. And I'm gonna not let you not see what I want you to see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, you know that I love video games, and it's almost like this is like the, uh, like, how do you say, like the very guided experience in cinema, you know, about more about like, hey, I'm going to be like taking you by the hand for actually just seeing first this, thinking this, feeling this, and then just moving to the next scene. Is it... It's like the, the Last of Us of a yeah. absurdist comedy. Correct. Yeah, exactly that. It's like a highly narrative kind of thing. That is, the, the medium is linear. The medium is not interactive, you know, like cinema in most cases. So uh, in this case, I just feel it's like there is nothing wrong. It's like he has like a, a story and a feeling that he wants me to develop on this. And it's fine. He talks about society. I don't think that it's going to be like changing much because I already feel like just pretty disgusted by influencers and like how society values beauty in this kind of perspective, you know, and luxury. So it didn't, I mean, it resonated with me because it's like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're ready like this and I think that actually his wife like the director's wife she's like a fashion photograph photographer so in she, real life in real life yeah so yeah, no judged by him <laughs> I think that there was like a bit of fun no I got inspiration from her I also thought about like this doesn't leave like the fashion industry exactly and they're pretty good light but whatever i love like the interview at the beginning with all of those pretty boys like all of the uh, incisive comments that the interviewer does i'm like how did you feel feeling that you're going to be doing like a fraction of the uh, of the money that a woman will be doing exactly doing the same and that your career is only going to be lasting for 10 years <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> I like when he's like, is this a happy brand or an angry brand? <laughs> it's like, it's like, it was like, it's Balenciaga. It's like, oh, yeah. yes. Now be happy. That's H&M. Yeah, like, do, you, do you despise your customers? Then you are a expensive brand. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot that's clever here for sure. Um, I, I particularly enjoyed... Uh, so the influencer couple ends up sitting at tables to eat with various couples and they always ask, oh, what do you do? And there's an old British couple who's like, oh, we make products that protect democracy all over the world. And they're <laughs> like, well, what does that mean? And they're like, we make grenades, hand grenades. Hand grenades. Hand <laughs> yeah. And so when... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't uh, know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, there's a very nice scene of irony. Yeah. Um, that I... Laugh super hard, so yeah, that, that thing is it's cute. <laughs> it says like, oh, you know, you see it coming, but it's like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> uh, honestly, I had, a, I had a good time watching it, you know. It's I honestly was like, look, this is not tar, let's be honest. Is like, I think that tar is more sophisticated than what it's doing, but for the one, smart. Brilliant, this, perfect. This smart. is this is a smart too. No, it is. I'm I'm just joking about how much yeah. I love tar. But yes, it's a smart film. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, there is a different level of uh, of craft, I would say. That here is a bit more. That look, I'm making fun of something, and I love that there are comedies like this. It is like, hey, I'm going to be like making fun of stuff, but it's not going to be like. I know it's going to be like a stupid. It's like, but gross for the sake of being gross. It's like going to the easy path. 
It's like I feel like there is like more a tiny bit more of nuance. This is not American Pie of a scary movie. Yeah, I feel like I watched a a less intelligent film recently that made fun of influencers, but now I can't think of it. But when you when I compare those two films, yeah, this is a smart way to highlight and poke fun at very real issues and problems with our society. No. No. Uh let me just think if anything else. <laughs> this is a tough movie to discuss. One because of the spoilers, but two, it's like I don't even know what to say about this film. It's weird and over the top and funny in parts and sad in others and I think that it's mostly fun, even like the sad parts as they are like wrapped around other like absurd comedy around is that I, I mean I didn't feel like too sad. Let's say there's there's one scene that I was particularly devastated. I assume. By. Yeah, I assume which one yeah. on the beach. Yeah. yeah. But um yeah, yeah, mostly it's a fun film, that's true. Well, because sometimes I think that the director wants to show that at the end of the day they're human. And at the end of the day, he's poking fun, but at these very real issues that we deal with every day. Like it's it's real. Like he's yeah, making yeah. us laugh at it, but like these are truths about our society. Yeah, but I, that's what I see. That is like a, below that layer of superficiality, you know, is that there are still human beings. Yeah. You know, uh, I won't give away because I I really like the ending. I love it. Honestly, I think that if it actually just ends in a high in a high note. I won't say anything else. We will discuss after the podcast. That conversation after the recording because I have a big question about what you think actually happened. I read about it, but yeah, we will get discuss about it. Um, honestly, I was how do you say like a happily surprised. I mean, not really surprised because I really like the square, so I was expecting more or less the same quality, and I feel like this is more or less the same quality. You know, it's like it's a different topic but i feel like i would be interested in revisiting more movies by this guy because usually i don't feel comedies they only have a purpose usually it's like that is like just making you laugh and then maybe like a bit of dramedy about like just making you sad for a moment but overall it's like it's making you laugh there are not so many movies that is like hey i want you to just think about society i'm on the process i'm going to be manipulating you for just feeling upset with them I'm very, very curious now. I think I might, not for the podcast, but I think I might watch The Square this week. Um, Just to remember it and see how it compares, because I think you're right in terms of quality and um, critique of society. I think it's very similar, but in my mind, this is a much funnier film than The Square was. But then when I think about the social media campaign about the girl being blown up by terrorists. Uh, Dude, dude, I love in the cinema. In the cinema, I was almost crying. I was almost crying out loud, you know. Is like I was with I I was with someone and they started at the beginning they were laughing, but when they saw that I wouldn't stop laughing, is that they were just looking at me. It's like, dude, now it's inappropriate to watch him laugh so much. You're taking it too far. You're taking it too far. Like, is <laughs> I'm just rolling with it. He's actually powering me up. Uh, but no, honestly, I just I like this guy. Honestly, I think that he's I. Who won last last year in Cannes? It was Titane. You watch it, no? No, this is the one you keep thinking I watched, and I did not watch it. <laughs> you watch Lamb, and we also record about Lamb. Lamb won the Palme d'Or. No, it was the certain regard. Oh, okay. That, that but... seems about right. Titane <laughs> <laughs> uh, was interesting, but it was like a bit really flawed from my perspective it was a bit of a all over the place this for me i just feel like it's perfect for a festival like can yeah it was titanay um and they canceled it apparently in 2020 i guess that makes sense oh yeah yeah, yeah. nothing good came out of this year or that year um uh, should we go over the questions yeah, let's do it. I mean, this is a hard film to discuss, especially with the spoilers. Not not giving away spoilers, so yeah. Yes. Maybe we should yeah. Maybe we should make a policy like in the future about like fuck the spoilers and yeah. just like go all out. I agree. Yeah, but yeah, for this one, let's just stop here. One thing that I'm going to be 
say I found like all of the love boat scenes and the characters involved with that hilarious. I will leave it like that. Okay. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I do. Yes. <laughs> They were, it's it's a smart. It's like it makes fun as this all from time to time. It rolls with the jokes. Sometimes it's like just pretty. I think it's like pretty light and at the same time like pretty deep. It, it plays a very smart dance in between, like just being deep and being stupid. I agree. I agree. Uh, I would you... comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> would you watch it again? Yeah, I would. Like in a year. <laughs> I agree. Not right now. It's like it's it's something that I would like to rewatch again, maybe with my boyfriend and say watch it like by myself this time. Or just having, you know, like some second opinion about like staring at someone else when they're watching it. I'm all like, how do you feel about it? Not because I'm going to be like knowing how I feel that person through this movie, but just having more about like curiosity about like hey, I find a lot of stuff funny here that Maybe I shouldn't. Like when I was <laughs> laughing. I Am I the problem? <laughs> exactly. Like uh, like in the square, you know, but I realized it's like, was this funny or was it me? Uh, would you recommend it? The answer is yes, but I can't identify the audience. Do I know someone in, in real life that would like this film? I, my husband liked it, you liked it, but maybe my brother in law. Yeah, I would recommend it, but in. Very specific. So you're not going to be like harassing people like randomly on the streets. No, not the because I've never met. Hey, did you see the triangle of sadness? Because there's this scene where people vomit for 20 minutes. <laughs> One thing that it was mind blowing. I went to the Gen Cisco, like the best cinema in Chicago, and uh, they actually had like some posters at the entrance of the movie about the movie and the one that they have for Triangle of Sadness, they have like the the one, the common one that they are like all of them like just laying on the yards. But the main one that they had when you were like walking up the stairs, it was one of the women, I think there was the Russian women like just vomiting. <laughs> it's like that photogram with the vomit, it's like just at this angle, you know, that is like, yeah, that's a vomit. And they spent like the whole movie like just waiting for this oh, to yeah. happen. Do you know who I think has a similar style taking things too far is Yorgos Lanthimos. I think that he stops before that. He's what? He stops before that. He makes you feel uncomfortable from oh, the yeah. beginning. He doesn't but go that far, but I'm wanting yeah. you to feel uncomfortable. Oh yeah. It's the yeah. same level. Yeah. 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 That that part I agree, but this guy is like makes you feel uncomfortable. And then he stays there for a while. He's like, no, no, no. He's I want you to feel really uncomfortable. He's you like, want I to was... look away, you will not look away. <laughs> Oh no, I, I, there was a moment on the first scene that I was like just sinking on my seat and I started like, fucking move this around. It's like, if I was on the table, not the next table, I would be like just going there and say like, shut the fuck up. I, I don't talk in movies ever. I don't make comments to the person I'm with. But like 10 minutes into that scene, I turned to my husband and said, I am so uncomfortable. And he's like, me too. I, I, yeah. I don't know if I can watch this. <laughs> but he prepares you. He prepares you for everything else. Like yeah, you. <laughs> it's yeah. a show. Yeah. Uh, would you remember it? Yes, I think so. This is a pretty memorable film. Although I forgot the square mostly, so maybe not. I'm going to say yes. I believe I'll remember. I don't think I would remember like, all of the beats, all of the sketches. You know, I won't remember, like, for example, like when she's asking, I want all of the stuff to go to the slide. When she's like, I I can't. Why not? <laughs> Leave your day. I, I can't. With a smile on her face that is like, that you see how uncomfortable, like, the staff so feels. I you, madame, but I can't. <laughs> I, ha I had to refuse, but it's so nice. You're such a kind soul. <laughs> it's hilarious. That conversation is hilarious, but I'm not going to remember that, you know? Yeah. I will remember the vomits. I will remember the love boat. I will remember probably the ending. I will remember like that comfortable dinner to sing. I will remember the point of the whole movie. Yeah, I, I think I'll remember most of it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, do you remember like the scene with the monkey in the square? I remember a monkey existing. I don't remember the scene. Yep, that's that's basically it. You know, they are like tidbits that they're going to be lost. So, uh, is there anything artistic about it? I 
mean, the direction is great. I think the script is pretty smart. Uh, I think the performances are good. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty artistic about this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there is the photography or the music. I think there is a bit more about like just that dance between like the pure campiness and the smart, you know, like with just like a critique to society. Is like this burlesque of sorts. I think that is talented. It's an art in itself. Agreed. Uh, is it a planless piece? I mean, I hope. We hope not. Sure <laughs> that influencers aren't a thing, and if they're not a thing anymore, then this might be timely. Uh, but I think always wealth, the exploration of wealth and power dynamics. It's yeah, okay, timeless, whatever. <laughs> I was torn about that too because it's like they mention influencer like several times, but I think that at the end it's a bit more about like how you. It's about currency, like we said, right? Exactly like, about like. Next. Yeah, and that, that's always going to be there. How you're going to be like using yourself, your skills, your beauty, you know, as a currency. Yeah. It has been there from the beginning of time and it will it be has. there until the end. So, uh, could you turn this into a TV show? Oh, God, no. Two hours and 20 minutes was about uh, as much long as I want to spend with the story. <laughs> I don't think that there is more exploration than I need for this topic. It was good. Yep, thank you. Yep. And when he releases another film in five years, I'll be ready to accept another one of his films in my life. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, could this have been a short? No, I don't think so. The magic is in the discussions that everyone has, I think. Um, whether it's yeah. that dinner scene, whether it's the Marxist versus socialism versus capitalism discussion. Uh, it's all about the time we spend with these characters for me at least yeah no definitely and how they actually evolve like the ones that they go like through the whole story so definitely that this is a movie that is like two hours and 20 this connects with the next question but it's like it could be edited down a bit but it still is is solid in what it's telling <clears throat> so the question is could it have been shorter no, 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 no. The question, the last question, do you think this movie could have been better? For me, it's like, I think that it could have been a bit shorter in some pieces. Like the vomitor scene, it's like, I, it gets to a point that is like, dude, this is just torture. I, don't know. I agree. So I, I was actually going to argue against changing it. But yeah, 20 minutes, it could even be 15, right? 15 minutes of vomiting. And you could still have that, hey, you're going to sit in the shit and vomit with these people as long as I want you could still yeah. get a point yeah. be so, so over the top yeah I uh, one fun thing about me I don't know why I find vomiting humor hilarious it's like a like a reaction like I, I know I never told you this I'm telling you this like for the first time in public in the podcast but I consider myself not completely like low bro and it's like most of the humor it doesn't connect to me but for some particular reason when I see someone well, I just vomiting in the context of comedy is like I cannot avoid chuckling for a second lap. <laughs> I can see that it's like uh, it's like shit humor but it's not as gross right it's like this uncontrollable bodily function without being so disgusting yeah, I can, yeah, I can see yeah. it's like it's the like balance the balance of campiness you know it's like it's not poopy you know uh, but uh, for me when that is singing was like yeah, I think that is not not funny anymore because when everything was like vomiting around you, it's like, what did you keep eating at this point? Why, why is this I still going on? I questioned everyone's behavior in that scene. I was like, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So as we are not doing the, do you remember the eighth of September, the ninth of September? What was the? Do you remember this one? Remember the twenty-first? No. Do you remember Earth, Wind, and Fire? Is that what Earth, Wind, and Fire? Yeah, yeah, Earth, Wind, and Fire. The twenty-first night of September. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, as we are not doing that section, uh, I think that it's time for the scoring. This. So this was my pick. So you have to score it first. I'm going to give this a 7.5. Okay. Why? Period. 
could have been from zero to ten, and it has been at seven point five. I actually feel like I'm stealing your criticism of Tar, maybe just to punish you. But I feel like he could have benefited from a little nuance, a little subtlety. <laughs> it didn't have to be all like hit you over the head. Um, that being said, if you took away the over the topness of his style, maybe it wouldn't be a style at all. And maybe yeah. this is his thing. So. Um, for me, this is a good film, not a great film, and it's entertaining, and I enjoyed myself, and it's good, not great. That's my explanation. Okay. Yeah. For me, my score is an eight. I think that Tar is better. Don't get me wrong before you go like today. This could have been the end of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like his style, as we are saying, is like it's surprisingly his style and it works well it's like for me that's where I just left the scene and I remain like just thinking about the ending thinking about like some of the scenes about it not about the moment but just thinking about like oh okay yeah this is like the kind of message that is trying to give me about society and is that the part that is like with Tar I wish that there was like a bit more of a, a can I project this to a larger scale can I actually take like some kind of gray areas? And this guy is all about like making fun of the gray areas and making fun about like how as a society we use currencies. When you picked Triangle of Sadness after Tar, it felt a little absurd to me because it's like Tar is on a pedestal in my mind and this is absurdist um, cinema. But actually, if we stripped out the content of the films themselves, we speak about them very similarly in terms of our experience, the way we experience the film yeah. and how we walk out of the film, which is interesting to me. So. Yeah, because I think that uh, Borderline for me didn't res- Tar didn't resonate as much. But as I told you, it's like, that's craft. Tar is craft in pure state. You know, about like just love of cinema, a lot of classical music, you know, and just being able to use the medium expertly, you know. And I think the Triangle of Sadness is is craft, but in a slightly different way. It's a bit more about like AI. I agree. Know. I think it's a lot craft, just yeah. a very different type of craft. Yeah. But he's good at his craft. He's good. Oh, yeah. yeah. And super I, I'm going to be like punishing you in the future for actually just watching like one more of his movies. I mean, did we discuss the square? I would be totally down at some point. Not now, maybe in like two or three weeks to watch the square again. Yeah, let's let's do the score in the future. I mean, I just have it like fairly recent, you know, like for three months ago when I watched it. But I would be down to watch it like in a near future. I would like to watch like something else by him, you know, like something previous to the square. You had Force Majeure, right? I never watched it. We could watch that one. Did they make a? They made an yeah. They made an American version with Will Ferrell. Right. <laughs> oh. I'll okay. have to check that. Don't don't quote me on that. But they made an American version, so. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, this this was good. I'm surprised. I thought that you were going to hate it. Honestly. Yeah, I surprised myself by liking it as much as I did. I I didn't have any expectations, good or bad, walking into this. I liked the trailer. I I found the trailer very funny. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, cool. Uh, so what are we watching this? Because it's your pick. So, if you heard the recording of Tar, you might have understood that I liked it. Um, <laughs> and I, we are, we actually started this podcast with a top Todd Field film, um, Little Children. So we're gonna watch his last, uh, the only other film he directed, right? Which is in the bedroom. So, what was the order of the movies? Was it in the bedroom, Little Children? And in the bedroom these? first, then Little Children, then Tar. Yeah, I'm super curious to see like where he came from, you know, like even how well, well crafted. Oh, you didn't watch it in the bedroom? I believe that I watched it, but I remember nothing, literally nothing. I, I can't tell you what it's about. I can't tell you the actors in it. I can tell you nothing. So maybe it'll come back to me when we watch it, but maybe I didn't even watch it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, no, nope. looking forward to actually watch it. Uh, and to everyone out there, thank you so much for putting up with us, go watch Triangle of Sadness and anything else that they should do. Just wash your hands. And don't eat seafood in bad state. Bye. <laughs>